This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. Chapter 4 Hirelings and Creatures Adventurers stand out from the common rabble because they are exceptional people with extraordinary skills and powers. Their lives are filled with glory, battles, monsters, and magic. To the common folk, adventurers are the stuff of legend. Many people can aspire to lead a life of excitement, but most are content to stay at home. After all, someone has to raise the crops, feed the livestock, make the, go the goods, and rend the bar, or tend the bar. Still, sometimes adventurers need to hire laborers and specialists to haul their treasure, act as bodyguards, or build their keep. Sometimes these hirelings come on for a special project and sometimes for longer periods of time, even permanently. In, some, in most cases, a PC seeking hirelings doesn't care who they are, where they come from, or what gods they worship. The most basic thing to know about hirelings include where to find them, determining how good they are, how much they cost, and how long they take to complete their job. Finding Hirelings As long as they are in a populated area, PCs should have no problems finding hirelings such as a porter, animal tender, ten tenders, laborers, and teamsters. Hirelings are found in areas that are appropriate for their profession, such as a wharf where porters work, or the artisan district where masons are located. Once there, the PCs should have little difficulty in locating the appropriate help, unless the DM decides to make it more difficult for them to find labor. A gather information check DC 10, 10 should be sufficient to find the right people. Negotiations can be glossed over unless the DM wants to make the prospect of employing a hireling more difficult for the adventurers, or if it is important to the flow of the story. Sometimes, however, adventure hooks can be can come from these seemingly in innocuous social encounters. For example, the PCs are trying to repair their keep and they head into a nearby city to hire some masons. They soon discover, however, that only a few masons remain in town. The rest have been hired out by some mysterious person who is building an imposing tower many miles away. Expert or specialized labor, on the other hand, is more difficult. To find and to find and depends on their size and population of a community. NPCs in the community in Chapter 4 of the Dungeon Master's Guide provides an excellent way to break down a given community's population and figure out how many hirelings of a particular profession are available. Obviously, the larger the population, the better chance of finding hirelings with better skills. Of course, there is nothing preventing an NPC with class levels to hire on or serve double duty, as, such as a militia member who also works as a blacksmith. A smaller community, it is, no, in smaller communities, it is common to find a single NPC who has multiple professions, though usually at low levels. However, such people might be reluctant to leave their homes because the community depends on them so much. Guilds In large towers, or in large towns, the bigger community, communities, in large towns and bigger communities, artisans and other hirelings are usually part of a guild. A guild is an association of craftspeople and artisans of a particular trade. For example, 
There could be a Smith's Guild, a Stoneworker's Guild, a Painter's Guild, and so on. There are also guilds for professions that do not provide items such as dock workers, day laborers, and couriers. The larger the community, the more specialized its guilds. In a small city or larger population center, you are more likely to find a goldsmith guild alongside a silversmith's guild, each handling a more specialized trade and with its own needs, members, and policies. More often than not, guilds of two or more similar trades try to work in cooperation, each with its own best interests at heart. Of course, guilds can wield considerable political power, especially in larger cities. Guilds establish guidelines for hiring, hiring artisans, provide legal protection, and set the base price for goods and services. They act as a liaison between workers and the upper class trying to increase profits and furthering the interests of the guild and its members. Competing guilds, however, sometimes try to disrupt each other's day-to-day -day businesses, including sabotaging projects and undercutting the competition. Guilds can also form the basis for patrons or competitors for adventurers. A guildsmith guild, for example, could commission a, a party to locate lost treasure to be melted down, or a guard or to guard a group of miners as they tunnel a new vein. Guilds might also become competitors or direct enemies of the PCs if their agendas clash. Most, but not all, guilds strike a balance between heavy-handed micromanaging and allowing the artisan to work freely. Use Table 4.1 below to determine the level of control that a guild has over its members. Table 4.1 Guild Control D Percentage 1, 0, 1 through 30 Guild Control Type None D percentage 31 through 70, guild control type, normal. D percentage 71 through 90, guild control type, restrictive. D percentage 91 through 100, guild control type, repressive. None, no guild exists for this particular trade. Artisans set their own wages but do not have any of the protections that a guild provides. Normal. A guild exists for this trade and is neither too lax nor too restrictive on its members. The guild collects 10% of an artisan's wages per month. The artisan can accept assignments outside of guild channels, although it is frowned upon. An artisan who does this too often, however, is subject to a fine of one die four gold pieces and is in the guild's bad graces. Restrictive. The guild is heavy-handed with its members and collects 20% of an artisan's monthly wages. It is difficult to find a hireling who works outside the guild. An artisan caught going outside guild channels for work must pay the guild the fee collected from the project and an additional fine of one die four times two gold pieces. Prices for hiring an artisan from a restrictive guild are increased by 50%. See cost of hirelings below. Repressive. The guild has a stronghold on this particular profession and collects 40% of the artisan's monthly wages. It almost, it, it's almost impossible to find someone who works outside the guild. An artisan caught going outside guild channels for work must pay the guild the fee collected from the project plus an additional fine of one die four times four gold pieces. 
Prices for hiring an artisan from a repressive guild are increased by 100%. See the cost of hirelings below. Cost of hirelings. The price in Table 5-2. Prices for hireling services in the Dungeon Master's Guide and on Table 4-2. Primary skills for hirelings. See the next page. Are for first level commoner and expert and rarely adept hirelings. Sometimes though, PCs want to hire better than average hirelings. A worker with greater skill gets the job done faster, with less raw material, and with better results. In game terms, this corresponds to the NPC's pertinent skill modifier. If you want to hire better workers, you need to find out if any are available and be willing to pay higher prices for their services. A hireling charges the per day rate for each level above first. For example, a first level mason expert charges three silver pieces per day of service. A second level mason charges six silver pieces per day and a fifth level mason comm commands fifteen silver pieces per day. This wage is in addition to the cost of raw material and equipment that might be required to complete the task. If the PCs hire a master artisan, see skill level of hirelings below, they should go they should be prepared to also hire on the entourage of journeymen and apprentice, apprentices that often accompany such experts. Many masters run down an assignment if they are not allowed to bring along their workers. This is not a, as bad as it sounds. A crew that learned from the worker works from and worked a crew that learned from and works under a single master gains a plus two synergy bonus of any relevant craft check. A typical master artisan has 1d4, negative 2, journeyman, 4th through 8th fourth through eighth level, and 1d4, negative 1, apprentices, 1st through 3rd level, under his tutelage at any given time. In addition to the daily wage, PCs must provide food or additional money for food for hirelings who go adventuring with them. Trail rations typically cost five silver pieces per day per hireling. Employers do not have to pay to feed hirelings who remain inside their home com com community. If PCs want hirelings to come along with them into dangerous situations, they may have to offer additional hazard pay in as incentive which is explained below. Adventuring, hirelings, and hazard pay. Hirelings are ordinary people compared to adventurers. They are content to stay at home, live their lives, and pursue their own interests. The hirelings section in Chapter 5 of the Dungeon Master's Guide gives rules for an NPC's initial attitude towards the PCs. Most hirelings described on Table 4-2 primary, primary skills for hirelings, particularly skills, skilled artisans, are unwilling to leave the safety and comfort of their homes to go adventuring. The table also indicates if a profession is active or sed sedentary by nature determining whether the NPC asks for additional pay when going into hazardous situation. Convincing normal sedentary hirelings to go adventuring requires a charisma check to alter the hirelings attitude. See NPC attitudes in chapter 5 of the Dungeon Master Guide. The hirelings initial attitude is indifferent and must be improved 
to friendly. The PC can offer hazard pay, which typically is double the da daily wage for that hireling. Doing so decreases the DC of the charisma check by five. Offering double hazard pay four times the daily wage reduces the DC by 10. Skill level of hirelings. The hireling section in chapter five of the Dungeon Master's Guide explains what is necessary to hire people for specific tasks. It assumes that the laborers, artists, and artisans being hired are first level com comment commoners or experts. In most cases, this level of skill is sufficient to get the job done, especially when unskilled labor is required, such as hauling goods or digging ditches. Sometimes though, hiring, hiring unskilled laborers above first level makes sense, such a tougher than average porter, porters who can withstand the rigors of overland adventures in the jungle. Determining the skill level of a hireling depends on a few factors. First, assume that the hireling is human, but see non-human hirelings below. Second, the hireling should have the maximum possible rank in his primary skill or skills. Four ranks at first level for class skills or two ranks for cross-class skills, which should be rare. Third, use the standard ability score array of 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8 for non-light NPCs, adept, aristocrat, commoner, expert, and warrior. The highest score, 13, is always in the hireling's key ability which grants a plus one bonus of skill checks. For example, an average blacksmith has a 13 intelligence because it is the key ability for the craft, blacksmithing. Skill. Finally, assume that the hireling has skill focus for his primary skill as one of his feats, showing his dedication to his profession. The typical first level hireling has a total bonus of plus seven on checks involving his primary skill, four ranks plus two for skill focus, plus one for ability score modifier. Hirelings increase their primary skill by plus one rank every level, maximum allowed. They always increase their key ability as they progress through levels, which grants an additional plus one bonus on checks using that skill at 4th, 12th, and 20th level. An artisan is considered an apprentice until he has gained seven ranks in his primary skill. At that point, the artisan community that he belongs to grants him the title of journeyman. When the artisan has gained 12 ranks in his primary skill, he earns the title Master. These titles have no gameplay effect, but greatly influence how the artisan is treated in social situations. At 5th level and higher, an artisan is likely to have his own set of masterwork tools. If the skill, u skill uses tools, See special and superior items in chapter 7 of the player's handbook for the benefits of masterwork tools. Table 4-2 primary skills for hirelings gives a variety of laborers, artisans, and other hireling, hire, hirelings, including common, commonly employed spellcasters. It also provides the primary skill used by a given hireling, the key ability of that skill, and the average wage per day for that hireling. Unless otherwise specified, assume 
that the hireling also has the profession skill in his related field. So an armor would have craft armor smithing as his primary skill, governing his ability to manufacture armor and profession armor for his knowledge of the field, types of armor, and so on. Table 4-2 Primary Skills for Hirelings Hireling Alchemist Primary Skills Alchemy Key Abilities Int Intelligence Typical MPC Class Expert Wage Per Day 1 1 Gold Piece GP Active Sedentary S Hireling Animal Tender Slash Groom Primary skills, handle animal, key ability, charisma, typical MPC class, commoner, wage per day, one, one SP, silver pieces, Act active slash sedentary, carry. A, S is sedentary, A is active, hireling, animal trainer, Primary skill skills, handle animal, animal empathy, key ability, charisma, typical NPC class expert, wage per day, one, eight silver pieces, active slash sedentary, S, hireling, animal, trainer, exotic. Primary skills, handle animals, animal empathy, key ability, charisma, typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, one gold piece, four, active sedentary, S, hireling, apath apothecary, primary skills, Knowledge, herbs, alchemy, key abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, one gold piece, active, <clears throat> sedentary, S, hireling, appraiser, primary skill, Appra skills, appraise, key abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, three SP, active sedentary, S, hireling, architect, primary skills, Profession, Architect, Key Abilities, Wisdom, Typical NPC Class, Expert, Wage Per Day, One, Five Silver Pieces, Active Sedentary, S, Hireling, Armorer, Primary Skills, Craft, Armor Smithing, Key abilities, intelligence, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert. Wage per day, one, three silver pieces, active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, barrister, primary skills, diplomacy, key ability, charisma, Typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, one gold piece, active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, blacksmith, primary skills, craft, blacksmithing, key ability, intelligent, intelligence, Typical NPC class, expert, 
wage per day one one gold piece oh wait three gold pe or three silver pieces active sedentary or slash sedentary s hireling bookbinder primary skill craft bookbinding key abilities intelligence Typical NPC class expert wage per day one three silver pieces active sedentary S hireling bout bout boyer boyer <clears throat> primary skills craft brewing or no craft brass making No, bow making. Craft bow making. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class. Commoner or expert. Wage per day one. Three silver pieces. Active slash sedentary. S. Hireling. <clears throat> Brazier. Primary skills, craft, brass making, key abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, three silver pieces, active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, brewer, primary skills, craft, brewing, Key ability, abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, commoner or expert, wage per day, one, three silver pieces, active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, butler, primary skills, diplomacy, profession, butler. Key abilities, charisma, and wisdom. Typical NPC class expert. Wage per day one, five silver pieces. Active sedentary, active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, carpenter. Primary skills, craft, woodworking. Key abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, three silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling, cartographer, craft, no, primary skills, craft, map making, forgery, key abilities, Intelligence, typical NPC class expert, wage per day one, four silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling, Cartwright, primary skills, craft, woodworking, key abilities, intelligence, Typical NPC class, commoner or expert. Wage per day, one, two silver pieces. Active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, Chandler. Primary skills, craft, candle making. Key abilities, intelligence. <laughs> Typical NPC class, commoner or expert. Wage per day one, two silver pieces. Active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling clerk. Primary skills, profession, clerk. Key abilities, wisdom, 
Typical NPC class, commoner or expert. Wage per day one, four silver pieces. Active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, cobbler. Primary skills, craft, shoemaking. Key activity, no, abilities. Intelligence, typical NPC class. Commoner or expert. Wages per day, one, four silver pieces. Active slash sedentary, S. Hireling, Cliffer, Cliffier, Primary Skills, Profession, Hairdresser, Key Abilities, Wisdom, Typical NPC Class, Commoner, Wages Per Day 1, 2 Silver Pieces, Active Slash Sedimentary, S. Hireling, Coffin Maker, Primary Skills, Craft Woodworking, Key Abilities, Intelligence, Typical NPC Class, Commoner or Expert, Wages Per Day 1, 3 Silver Pieces, Active Slash Sedimentary, S. Hireling. Composer. Primary skills. Perform. Any. Key abilities. Charisma. Typical NPC class. Expert. Wages per day. One. Four silver pieces. Active. Slash. Sedimentary. S. Hireling cook. Primary skills, profession, cook. Key abilities, wisdom. Typical NPC class, commoner or expert. Wages per day, one. One silver piece. Activity slash sedentary, A. Hireling <coughs> cooper. Primary skills, craft, woodworking, key abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, commoner or expert, wages per day, three silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling, courier, in town. Primary skills, knowledge, local area, run, feed. Key abilities, intelligence, constitution. Typical NPC class, commoner, wages per day, one, two copper pieces, five. Active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling. Courier, out of town, primary skills, knowledge, local area, ride, ride. key abilities, intelligence, dexterity, typical NPC class, commoner, wages per day, one, two copper pieces, five, active slash sedimentary, A, hireling, Coppersmith. Primary skills. Craft. Coppersmithing. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class. Expert. Wage per day one. Two copper pieces. No, three silver pieces. Active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling, <clears throat> Dowser. Primary skills, Intuit, Direction. 
key abilities, wisdom, typical NPC class. Commoner or adept. Price per day or wage per day one. One gold piece. Activity slash sedentary S. Hireling dire. Primary skill. Into it. No. Craft die making. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class, wisdom, no, com typical NPC class, commoner or adept, wage per day, one, two silver pieces, active or sedimentary, S. Hireling. Embalmer, primary skills, profession, embalmer, alchemy, abilities, key abilities, wisdom, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wage Per day, one, two silver pieces, no, three silver pieces, active slash sedimentary S. Hireling engineer, primary skills, profession engineer, key abilities, wisdom, Typical NPC class, expert, wage per day, one, five silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, carry, S. Hireling, engineer, siege. Primary skills, knowledge, Tactics. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class. Class expert. Wage per day. One. Two gold pieces. Active slash sedimentary A. Hireling entertainer slash performer. Primary skills. Skill perform any. Key abilities. Charisma. Typical NPC class. Common or expert wages. Per day, one, four silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling Fletcher. Primary skills, craft, bow making. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class, expert. Wages per day, one, three silver pieces. Active slash sedimentary S. Hireling footman. Primary skills or primary skill. Diplomacy. Knowledge. Nobility. Key abilities. Charisma. Intelligence. Typical NPC class. Commoner. Wage. Wages per day, one, one silver pieces, or one silver piece. Active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling, gem cutter, 
primary skills, craft, gem cutting, <laughs> key, abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wages per day, one, four silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling Goldsmith. Primary skills. Craft Goldsmithing. Key abilities. Intelligence. Typical NPC class. Expert wages per day. One or silver pieces. Active slash sedimentary S. Hireling Governess. Primary skills, diplomacy, knowledge, nobility. Key abilities, charisma, intelligence, typical NPC class, expert, wages per day one, four silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling guide, wilderness. Primary skill, skills, knowledge, local, wilderness, lore. Key abilities, intelligence, wisdom. Typical NPC class, commoner or expert, wages per day, one, three silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling, hireling guide, city, primary skills, knowledge, local, diplomacy, key abilities, intelligence, charisma, typical NPC class, commoner or expert, wages per day, one, Three silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, A. Hireling, haberdasher. Primary skills, craft, hat making. Key, abilities, intelligence, typical NPC class, commoner or expert. Wages per day, one. Two silver pieces, active slash sedimentary, S. Hireling, healer, spellcaster, primary skills, heal, cure light wounds. Key, skip abilities, no, key abilities, wisdom, typical. NPC class, adept, wages per day, one, five silver pieces, three, active slash sedimentary, A, hireling, horner, primary skills, craft, horn working, key abilities, intelligence, Typical NPC class expert, wages per day one, three silver pieces, active slash sedentary S. Craft and professional skills. When creating characters, players usually focus on fighting ability. They sometimes skimp or on certain fighting ability on certain skills that may not seem glamorous, but can prove very handy. The craft and professional skills in, partic in particular are excellent for defining what the character does and what sort of background she came from. Perhaps she's a fighter who learned to wield a sword that she created herself while working as a blacksmith's apprentice. Alternatively, maybe she's a rogue who learned the 
intricacies of locks and traps while under the tutelage of a local locksmith. There may be times during a game when a PC's craft or professional skill can shine. A character with any sort of craft skill, such as smithing, carpentry, or stoneworking, can create items on the fly when needed. In addition, such characters can possess crucial information about the properties of objects, such as doors, walls, and tunnels. A Fletcher can provide the party with a ready source of ammunition. A weaponsmith can construct swords and spears to equip mustard troops. Ha having an armor armorer in your group ensures that everyone's arm armor remains in top shape after each battle. A bard who is skilled in painting or sculpting can create wondrous works of art that dazzle just as much as song. Being skilled in a craft or profession also allows the PC to write the work of others. A trained blacksmith recognizes second-rate swords, while a someone with craft, shipbuilding, or professional or profession sailor knows if the ship the party plans to board is seaworthy or not. The DM can also work with these skills, giving the PCs an opportunity to solve problems without resorting to violence. By offering to rebuild a collapsed mill, for example, the party could win the favor of local peasants who are initially indifferent to or suspicious of the adventurers. Certain crafts are closely related the abilities of goldsmith vary only slightly from those of a silversmith. In game terms, if a character has ranks in a craft or profession skill closely related to a skill that he wants to attempt, then the DM can allow the attempt at a negative 2 penalty. Examples include a carpenter, craft, woodworking, attempting to create a wagon wheel, craft, wheel work, right or a blacksmith craft blacksmithing, trying to create a suit of armor craft armor smithing. In Table 4-2, primary skills for hirelings 1 means if a hireling is a being paid to create a specific item, use it, use item prices and working times instead. Wage given is for long-term retention of services. Wages do not include the cost of material or tools. Two means laborers and porters commonly have a craft skill but are hired for their strength and endurance. Three means daily wages only. Each casting of a spell consists additional money. See hiring spellcasters below. And four means minimum daily wage. Exotic animal trainers and sages often charge more than this for their services. And five means per month. Hiring Spellcasters NPC Spellcasting in Chapter 5 of the Dungeon Master's Guide provides the necessary rules for paying a spellcaster to cast a certain spell for you. Table 4-3 commonly cast spells prices provide costs for frequently requested spells. These costs assume the minimum caster level required for the spell, plus any additional costs for XP spent on material fossil. Spellcasters are no more or less likely to go on adventures than other experts for hire. Some are content to study their art at home and others prefer to strike out into the wilderness. Teleportation costs. Teleportation is in great demand by PCs for getting from one point to another without the hazard of what might be in between. The prices given below are average costs 
that a spellcaster charges. The price is doubled because two castings of the spell are involved. The spellcaster must come along with the customer and then return back through another use of the spell. Prices for teleportation double if the caster knows he is going into dangerous or hostile territory. Table 4-3 Commonly Cast Spell Prices Spell Analyze Dweemer Cast Level 11th Total Cost 2,160 Gold Pieces Spell Continual Flame Caster Level 3rd Total Cost 110 Gold Pieces Spell Control Weather Caster Level 11th Total Cost 660 Gold Pieces Spell Cure Light Wounds Caster Level Burst Total Cost 10 Gold Pieces Spell Cure Moderate Wounds Caster Level 3rd Total Cost 60 Gold Pieces Spell Cure Critical Wounds Caster Level 7th Total Cost 280 Gold Pieces Spell Cure Serious Wounds Caster Level 5th Total Cost 150 Gold Pieces Spell Fabricate Caster Level 9th Total Cost 450 Gold Pieces Spell Gate Caster Level 17th Total Cost 1530 Gold Pieces Spell Greater Restoration Caster Level 13th Total Cost 3410 Gold Pieces Spell Hill Caster Level 11th Total Cost 660 Gold Pieces Spell Identify Caster Level 1st Total Cost 110 Gold Pieces Spell Legal Lore Caster Level 11th Total Cost 910 Gold Pieces Spell Lesser Restoration Caster Level 3rd Total Cost 60 Gold Pieces Spell Move Earth Caster level 11th, total cost 660 gold pieces. Spell permanency, caster level 9th, total cost 1. And it's just 1, no gold pieces, no nothing, just 1. Spell plane shift, caster level 9th, total cost 450 gold pieces Spell Raise Dead Caster Level 9th Total Cost 950 gold pieces Spell Regenerate Caster Level 13th Total Cost 910 gold pieces Spell Reincarnate Caster Level 7th Total Cost 280 Gold Pieces Spell Remove Blindness Slash Deafness Caster Level 5th Total Cost 150 Gold Pieces Spell Remove Curse Caster Level 5th Total Cost 150 gold pieces Spell remove disease Caster level 5th Total cost 150 gold pieces Spell restoration Caster level 7th Total cost 380 gold pieces Spell resurrection Caster level 13th Total cost 
1,410 gold pieces. Spell Sending, to, uh, Caster Level 7th, total cost 150 gold pieces. Spell Speak with Dead, Caster Level 5th, total cost 150 gold pieces. Then Spell Teleport, Caster Level 9th. Cost two. Caster love or spell. Teleport without error. Caster level thirteenth. Cost two. Spell. Teleport circle. Caster level seventeenth. Cost total cost two. Spell. Tongues, caster level 5th, total cost 150 gold pieces. Spell, true resurrection, caster level 17th, total cost 6,530 gold pieces. Now 1, varies by spell, and 2, see teleportation cost below for more information. So with permanency, the caster level is ninth, and the total cost varies by spell. Teleport without error is thirteenth, and teleport is ninth, and the total cost is C teleportation cost below for more information. And teleportation circle is 17th, and it's also see teleportation cost below for more information. Service for teleportation costs. Service. Teleport one shot, very familiar area, cost 900 gold pieces. Teleportation one shot, studied area, cost 1,000. 80 gold pieces. Teleport one shot area seen casually. Cost 1,260 gold pieces. Teleport one shot area viewed once. Area viewed once 1,440 gold pieces. Teleport one shot description of area only. Cost 1,620 gold pieces. Teleport without error, 1,000 or cost 1,820 gold pieces. Teleportation circle, very familiar area, cost 3,060 gold pieces. Non-human hirelings. The default race for hirelings is human, only because they tend to be the most numerous race in an area. <laughs> Racial Demographics on chapter in chapter four of the Dungeon Master's Guide gives the typical distribution of races among a population with hirelings following the same percentages. Typically, non-humans are hired because they are the only type of help available, due to racial preference by the PCs or because they are particularly suited for the job at hand. In most cases, the race of a hireling does not affect how she does her job. The advantages and disadvantages of a particular race tend to balance out in the end. PCs should also be aware of possible friction within a group of mixed race hirelings. In some campaigns, racial animosity runs deep. Hirelings of different races could start trouble among themselves or even against a PC if they have a particular beef against the PC's race. A DM wishing to play up this tension can assume that a hireling has an in, in, initial unfriendly attitude. Of course, a PC with a ra racist streak could prove quite a hindrance 
when trying to find specific non-human hirelings. Dwarves. Dwarves make excellent blacksmiths, stonesmiths, and engineers. They have a stone cunning ability which grants a plus two racial bonus on skills involving stonework of all kinds. If you hire a dwarf for any stone related job, mason, stone cutter, and the like, remember to include this plus two bonus. Dwarves can produce impressive buildings, statues, and feats of engineering. They know that they are the best artists, artisans around and it is not unheard of for dwarves to charge double or triple the amount of a human would ask. Elves. Elves also produce, produce objects of unparalleled beauty and grace. However, they usually take a long time to produce items and do not work well with the human concept of deadline. It is not uncommon for elven artisans to take two or three times longer than other workers to finish an item. However, there is no denying the quality of their work. Since they are deeply concerned with aesthetics, elves tend to be more snobbish than other races and may turn down an assignment simply because they consider it beneath them. Unless you are in an exclusive elven community, the chances of finding an elven porter or laborer are virtually non-existent. Gnomes As long as you can maintain your concentration on a given task, gnomes make excellent hirelings. They are as long as they can maintain their concentration on a, on a given task, gnomes make excellent hirelings. They are energetic, innovative, and inspired creatures. Gnomes have a natural infinity for mechanical devices. However, they enjoy practical jokes which sometimes disrupt the dull rhythm of a workshop. Gnomes enjoy these diversions while others find them annoying at best. Halflings Although halflings tend to be the most common non-humans in communities, they are not so readily available as hirelings. Being smaller and weaker than human, humans, halflings tend to disdain most physical labor. This behavior should not be mistaken for laziness, however. Halflings are insatiable, curious, insatiably curious, but often lack the concentration and willpower to focus on most crafts. However, nomad halflings, halfling clans, need to be self-sufficient, so trained artisans and hirelings are more readily available among those groups. Half-elves Half-elves have the energy and zeal of their human parent plus the long-term vision and admiration of beauty of their elven blood. Their location often dictates what sort of trade they learn. Half-elves who inhabit elven communities probably toil as unskilled laborers, while those found in human communities probably find skilled craft work. Half-elves who choose a particular craft can become true masters if they overcome the social stigma of their mixed blood. Half-orcs Half-orcs are commonly re relegated to physical toil because few people are willing to make them on, or take them on as apprentices for more skilled work. Among human communities, they are often found on their, the lowest social rung, working at jobs for which their natural strength is an advantage, such as porters, laborers, animal handlers, and ferrymen. Among orcs, half-orcs might still remain in the bottom caste, viewed as tainted half-reeds or be sought after as having the intelligence to master a trade. 
mercenaries. Adventurers want to hire little, a little extra muscle every once in a while, which usually means that they turn to mercenaries. In many ways, recruiting mercenaries is just like getting any other hireling. You find them, set the terms of their employment, and agree on a price. Unlike regular hirelings, mercenaries are brought on to engage in dangerous behavior, which means that their definition of hazard pay is quite different from that of other people. An artisan considers any dangerous situation, such as combat, to be hazardous and either refuses the job or increases the the asking wage accordingly. A mercenary charges hazard pay only for unusually dangerous situations such as assaulting a dragon's lair, marching hundreds of miles across a scorching desert, or fighting hordes of undead. Although they are aware of the uncertainties of the battlefield, mercenaries still expect to fight foes that are within their ability. A first-level warrior is prepared to do battle against goblins, orcs, skeletons, and other creatures, or CR1 or lower, while higher-level mercenaries can take on correspondingly tougher foes. If mercenaries continually end up fighting creatures that pose bigger challenges, this drastically affects their attitude. If the DM determines that mercenaries are routinely outclassed in combat, their attitude shifts to unfriendly. If the PCs continually thrust them into dangerous situations, say always making them lead the way in a dungeon infested with beholders, the mercenaries' attitude shifts to hostile. They either demand more money or leave the party as soon as it is possible, and say, do so. Paying Mercenaries PCs can hire a mercenary who comes complete with his own equipment, including armor, weapons, mount, and barding, or they can hire an able-bodied warrior and provide arms and armor. Troops that have their own equipment tend to be better trained, but more expensive. Troops without their own equipment have widely variable abilities, but accept less pay per day. Table 4-4 sample mercenary equipment lists different troops that provide their own equipment. This includes armor and weapons, including horse and barding for mounted troops. The table shows how much their equipment costs and what level the average character might be to afford it. The better the equipment, usually the better the warrior if you hire mercenaries who have expensive equipment, especially mounted troops, be prepared to pay more per day. The equipment on the table does not include any magic items which should be very rare among regular mercenaries. Typically, a warrior should be at least 7th level before owning some kind of magical weapon or armor. If troops of a particular level are not available in the area, the DM can allow lower level troops to have better equipment, assuming they obtain it through spoils of war by forming working as by formally working as guards or for some other reason. They still demand the wage of the level corresponding to their equipment, so it's up to the PC to decide if they want to pay for daily wage payback daily wages for less able troops. They can hire troops with no arms or armor and equip them yourself. You can hire troops with no arms or armor and equip them yourself. The d daily wage for those mercenaries is two silver pieces times level for foot troops and four silver pieces times level for mounted ones. Of course you have to provide armor 
and weapons, paying the cost given in the player's handbook or using armor and armor acquired through adventure. The mercenaries understand that they do not own their equipment, but they are not responsible for damage to it or loss of it while fighting on behalf of the PCs. Upon completion of an assignment, they return the weapon and armor. There is always a risk, however, that some troops will steal the equipment, especially if they feel they were treated harshly. Some mercenaries quit if the weapons and armor are not of a certain quality. A 7th level warrior rarely tolerates being given padded armor and half spear to fight with, unless times are truly desperate. Use Table 4-4 Sample Mercenary Equipment to determine the typical arms and armor for a warrior of that level. Warriors accept equipment that is up to two levels beneath them without a problem. If the PCs offer lower quality slash equipment or lower quality equipment than that, however, the mercenary's attitude immediately becomes unfriendly and must be brought up to at least indifferent before they will accept the assignment. Mercenaries of any level happily use equipment that is better than that indicated for their level. This benefit improves their attitude by one step automatically. It is typically for mercenaries to get to a share of the loot acquired during adventuring. The exact amount is set by haggling between the party and the mercenary. This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook, Roger Hansen on Patreon, and Gaming with Infamous on Discord. Thanks for stopping by. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon and check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.